Welcome to another one of my care videos. If you're familiar with my care videos, then you know, so it's furry sneezing in the background, then you know that this video is going to be rather extensive. It'll probably be more than 20 or 30 minutes long, and I implore you to listen to the whole thing before leaving a comment or a question or anything like that. But I'm, of course, welcoming questions and comments. Just wait till the very end to make sure that I haven't answered it in the video. And listen carefully, take notes, do what you have to do. There's a couple things I want to say before we get into the video. One, please do research outside of just this video. I can only speak to the research I've done and my own personal experience. So you obviously want to get more than just my own experiences. So please do that and look at other places, other videos, other forums, whatever. The second thing is I don't like to make care videos for a species that I've kept for less than six months. So that's why this video has taken so long to come out. I've had my cave gecko now since June. I think it was June or July actually, but it's been six months. So it's time for a care video and the reason I wait six months is so that I can learn as much as possible before putting out any misinformed or ill-informed content that would definitely not be a goal of mine. Sorry my dog is like really needy and I don't want him to knock into the, the camera. Okay and finally please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Oh and one more thing please stay till the very end for an enclosure tour where you'll get to see exactly how I keep my cave gecko and hopefully that'll be helpful for you. Oh Jackson I told you he was gonna do it. Stop it right now. So like with all my care videos, I like to start with the enclosure size. So enclosure size is always a very particular topic when it comes to reptiles and most animals in general, honestly, hamsters, other types of animals. There's always, always debate around enclosure sizes. But for cave geckos, fortunately, it seems like everyone always steers to the larger side. So when I was doing research, everyone said a 20 gallon or larger. I personally use an 18, 18, 18 exoterra, which is a larger than a 20 gallon in terms of its square space. And the reason you want to go with something that's on the larger side is because they are super active They are active only at night though So you don't get to see that but we'll get to that later and they're also very arboreal and they will use the space that you give them To engage with in terms of climbing also real quick I like to apologize for this being so dark, but like it's like three o'clock here and it's so dark out I hate winter I hate winter. But anyways, like I said, I keep my cave gecko Nymeria in an 18-18-18 exoterra, and I also have the walls lined with cork tile, which you'll see later at the end of the video when I do the enclosure tour. But the reason that I chose to go with cork tile is because she literally climbs every square inch that I give her to climb. So when I first got her, I got her with her enclosure, and she was in a 24 by 18 by 12 exoterra, it was a bioactive one, and a lot of the room was taken up with substrate because it was bioactive, so they had like the drainage layer and everything, so I didn't think she was getting the best climbing that she possibly could, so I put her in a different enclosure for the time being. I think I gave her a 20 long, which still gave her more space because it's 12 inches high and she only had like eight before because of the substrate. But then I was like, that's still not enough. And she just didn't seem like she was her best. So I gave her the 18, 18, 18, including the cork tile walls. One thing you're gonna wanna make sure about the enclosure is that it's secure. Because like I said, these geckos are really great at climbing and they're itty bitty. So they could get right out of somewhere. So make sure you have a secure screen lid. Another reason I like the exoter is because it's open front. So the fact that I can just kind of reach my hand in there, she can see me coming or she can see me giving her food or spraying the enclosure, that makes it easier for her not to be afraid of me and these are very shy geckos which we'll get to later so it's better to have something front opening than top opening as for substrate there are a couple different options you could use I personally right now use eco earth and I have also kept her on paper towel when I first got her she was on top of repti bark which I did not like didn't think it was appropriate after I moved her to the 20 gallon long for a little while she had paper towel because I wanted to see how she did with that I personally think that it did not hold humidity as well as I wanted it to and I also didn't like the aesthetic of it which I normally wouldn't go with eco earth for aesthetic but Nymeria is a very interesting gecko in the fact that she will only poop in her humid hide she will not poop anywhere except her humid hide so the eco earth stays very clean because she refuses to poop elsewhere so that's one reason why I feel safe using eco earth now like with any loose substrate there is a risk of impaction many people will say that eco earth is not a risk um, in terms of impaction for geckos I think that it's definitely a risk it's not as risky as like sand or something which by the way do not keep your cave gecko on sand but you have to keep that in mind when you use loose substrates that that is a risk so make sure you are 
feeding your gecko either outside of its enclosure or from a bowl. And one more suggestion I have actually about Eco Earth is don't just like dump it in there and then wet it and leave it loose because they're not a burrowing species. What I like to do for species that don't like burrowing um, is take a lot of the Eco Earth, put it in there and compact it while it's wet. So it'll like make this firm little earth layer that like when it dries out doesn't move that much because it's been compacted. It literally just looks like like topsoil or earth that's been flattened. And it works really well because it doesn't kick up a lot. It retains moisture well because it's so compacted. And then also there's, you know, gonna be better joint health for your gecko. So one thing people often talk about when they talk about loose substrates is the joint health. Or I'm like shaking my elbow because joint health. When you have a gecko on a substrate that kind of like disperses underneath their feet, like it's more loose than it is compact, it's not going to give them the best joint health. It's not going to give them the best like firm ground like the substrate will disperse underneath of their feet and their joint will not have to feel that pressure so they're not going to put a lot of muscle into it it's just gonna be kind of like sliding around so if you use compacted eco earth it gets rid of that problem I know plenty of people that do use paper towel and they have success you just have to spray like a couple more times a day when it comes to substrate no matter what you use you're gonna to want to keep it clean so when it starts getting soiled with poop or if there's like bug guts on it or if there's any sort of nasties you're gonna to want to take it out and clean it that goes for eco earth that goes for paper towel that goes for anything that you use oh uh, one thing i want to know is that i've never ever seen nymeria dig so if you choose not to use eco earth it's not like you're going to be neglecting your cave gecko's natural instincts to, to um dig it's not something that i've ever seen her do so like i said i use eco earth for humidity purposes and humidity is a key factor with this species. Some people say that cave geckos are like a combination of crested geckos and leopard geckos and it's kind of true because they require the exact same humidity basically as a crested gecko. The minimum uh, humidity percentage that you're going to want to achieve is 60% humidity but 60 to 80 is the perfect range and for Nymeria with Eco Earth I spray down her enclosure really really well at night and then it dries out throughout the day and that's how I achieve hers but for some people if you use paper towel or if you just have like a drier environment you're gonna want to spray twice a day or more or get a misting system to achieve those um, proper humidity levels. The humid hide that Nymeria has is one of those like kind of rounded flat on the bottom caves from Exoterra. I've never personally used them it's something that she came with so since she was pooping in it and I wanted to encourage that behavior I kept it so it has flattened eco earth it's like real squishy down so it stays moist and then I change it out once a week since she does poop in there it gets nasty so I change it out once a week and it stays pretty moist because it's compacted and because it's closed off so that's what I do for a humid hide but another type of humid hide that you know you could make out of a Tupperware container and paper towel for example as long as you have somewhere for them to go where they can seek out the humidity when their enclosure starts to dry out a bit I do want to warn against using sphagnum moss though because it is not easily digested or passed so if you want to use a substrate use Eco Earth and if you don't use paper towel. Because they require such a high humidity you want to make sure that it, the enclosure has the ability to dry out so you're definitely going to want to make sure that it has a mesh lid. If you notice that you're having trouble getting the enclosure humidity at 60 to 80 percent it might be because your lid is too large and so what you can do in that situation is you can cover part of the lid or even better you can take some aquarium safe silicone and a, like a little acrylic or glass sheet and silicone it in place now if you do that method obviously you'll be without a lid for 24 hours because the aquarium silicone takes uh, 24 hours to cure before it's safe to use in an enclosure or around animals but it really holds up well and it looks nicer than just like throwing something on top of the lid. Make sure you leave plenty of air though because you do want to have good ventilation and you do want your lizard to be able to breathe so don't cover the whole lid. Now let's move on to temperature. So temperature is very similar to a crested gecko. They can be really sensitive to temperatures that are in the mid to high 80s. You definitely don't want to go too high above 80 and you certainly don't want to go below the high 60s. So when it comes to the winter weathers I keep a heater in, underneath of Nymeria's enclosure so that she has a warm spot to go to. If your bedroom is naturally on the colder side or whatever room you decide to keep your Chinese cave gecko in, if it's on the colder side all year round and it's like normally around like 70 or cooler or 72 and cooler, you can offer a heater set to 80, an under tank heater that is regulated with a thermostat set to 80. So when you have that set up, your gecko will have a warm spot to go to. Some people recommend that even if your temperature 
temperatures are in the mid to high 70s that you still should have a tiny little space that has a heater just in case your gecko wants to go over there. And since putting a heater in, I haven't noticed a huge change in Nymeria. Um, I do keep one in there since it's winter, like I said, but I haven't really noticed a huge change in her behavior or anything. She is eating less because of brumation, which is something all reptiles go through. By the way, brumation is basically reptile hibernation. It's a lot of fun <laughs> for reptile keepers, but it's completely natural, so do not worry yourself over your reptile not eating or being less active in the winter. I personally kept Nymeria without a heater up until the cold months, so when it was like 75 in the pet room, she didn't have a heater, and now she has one, and I haven't really noticed a big difference, so I think it is up to personal choice. If you have one, don't make it cover more than like a third of the floor space. Hers only covers like like a sixth it's a very small area because i know how sensitive they can be to heat now when it comes to lighting they are very simple don't put light on them they don't need a uvb light they don't need a light like for a day night cycle as long as you have like a window in the room and they can establish like oh it's daytime oh it's nighttime they'll be happy in general you're going to make your gecko feel a lot more skittish or shy if you keep a light on it they are cave geckos so they have lived in caves and i'll talk more about that in a separate video actually which i'll mention at the end of this video sorry my dogs are like literally trying to push into the camera stop since they live in caves they prefer it dark they prefer it humid and quiet so if you put a light on them you're definitely guaranteeing that you are going to see them a lot less than you likely already won't see them much anyway so if you really want to um never see your cave gecko put a light on its enclosure <laughs> for feeding it's also very simple because they are insectivores and anything that is you know small enough to fit in the space between their eyes or fit in their mouths you're pretty much able to feed them I currently only feed her doobie roaches because she will not eat anything else she's been eating doobie roaches her whole life I've tried giving her mealworms I've tried giving her waxworms I've tried giving her hornworms I've tried giving her what else oh well, small super worms I've tried giving her all kinds of things and she without fail rejects everything i've had her eat like one tiny small hornworm and that was that i think that's it i think other than that she's only eating doobie roaches but that's just my experience yours may eat all kinds of things and if your gecko will i encourage that you do that because geckos that have a variety of diet are going to be more healthy the one thing you'll want to make sure is that if you are using a loose substrate you feed from a dish or you feed your gecko in a separate enclosure which i don't recommend because they're a very shy species and so they're more likely to eat on their own terms at night because they are nocturnal so make sure that you're offering food in a bowl that's exactly what i do i just offer a small ceramic dish so that insects can't crawl out but so that Nymeria can still reach in and get them. You'll want to make sure that any insects that you offer your cave gecko are gut loaded and gut loading is the process by which you offer healthy foods to the insects 24 hours before you offer them to your animal and really if you keep insects you should just kind of feed them regularly don't like think about I have to feed them 24 hours before I feed them to my lizards no just feed them healthy foods all the time that way they're pretty much always gut loaded some of the things you can offer to the insects are carrots broccoli you can offer different types of greens you can offer fruits and vegetables basically you want wholesome fruits and vegetables so don't offer potato potato isn't going to do anything for your lizard so make sure you're offering healthy foods the reason that you want to gut load insects is because your animal will receive all that nutrients that the insect received from the healthy foods so if you feed a non gut loaded insect it's kind of just like what you doing what's the point it's kind of like feeding a junk food almost or if you feed them like a potato it's kind of like feeding a junk food <laughs> when it comes to feeding there's one more thing you're going to want to make sure that you're doing and that is dusting with a quality calcium d3 and multivitamin supplement i personally use rapashi calcium plus it came to me vet recommended it came to me breeder recommended and i have never used anything since and i've been using it for over a year now it's been amazing actually like a year and a half because it was may of last year so yeah a year and a half now i love it it has a delightful smell. It's not like that thick, chunky consistency that a lot of like the calcium products have. It's not expensive. It lasts forever. It's super fine. And I found that some reptiles like the smell or the flavor of it, so it's really good. But I use that on all my feeder insects and including the feeder insects I give to Nymeria, my Chinese cave gecko. When it comes to offering dusted food, you're gonna wanna do that every other feeding to every second feeding. So say I was to feed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you will want to dust 
dust on a Monday, skip Wednesday, dust on a Friday, or if you feed um, every single day for a juvenile, you'll still want to skip every other. Hope that makes sense. But in terms of how often you should feed or how much you should feed, I feed Nymeria insects every single day because right now she's not eating anything <laughs> because she's brew mating. So I just offer them every single day and she's not really going for it. But when they're adults and they're full grown, you can offer food every other day, which would equate to a couple times or maybe three times a week. The amount of insects that you're gonna wanna offer for a full grown would be like, I don't know, eight to 10 in a sitting. So if you're offering mealworms, eight to 10 is fine. If you're offering tiny dubia, eight to 10 is fine. If you're offering a like decent sized hornworm though, obviously you don't wanna offer eight to 10. Use your best judgment, you know, like what looks like a substantial meal in terms of, you know, how many mealworms does it take to equal a hornworm and things like that. So you can feed them very similarly to if you have like leopard geckos, for example, I feed Nymeria. I would feed her more, but she only eats dubia roaches, but I feed her very similarly in amount that I would feed um, a leopard gecko. The thing to know about Chinese cave geckos is that they are smaller so like you won't have to feed them real huge meals because it doesn't take a lot to sustain them and also if you feed too too much you may notice that your gecko is getting overweight and of course you don't want that either because um, that's unhealthy. In any food that your gecko does not consume make sure you take it out and swap it with new food that way it is gut loaded. Oh one last thing kind of in the food arena make sure you have a water dish with fresh water should be dechlorinated water personally I can use tap water because we have dechlorinated water naturally from a well so we don't have to worry about dechlorinating which is amazing as an animal keeper but if you don't have that you'll have to dechlorinate it and then of course change that water out a couple times a week whenever it gets nasty whenever your gecko might accidentally get some eco earth in it you know use your best judgment in terms of keeping things fresh now let's talk about decor. Decor for a Chinese cave gecko is going to be anything that would elicit climbing or provide a hide. So they are super, super shy species. Nymeria in her enclosure has a bazillion places to hide, lots of areas that cover darkness, and most importantly, all of those areas also elicit climbing. You're not gonna wanna use anything that's like a super smooth texture because that doesn't elicit climbing. So what you'll wanna use is like a cork bark or a textured driftwood, or I mean, if you use a resin cave, it's gonna have to be textured because a lot of resin caves are super slippery. So use your best judgment when it comes to that. But personally, I have had a lot of success with with a rough piece of driftwood with like seven cork rounds and with cork tile walls and with um, I think it's exoterra ferns the ones that are like little ground plants the reason I chose those is because they make a lot of ground cover and a lot of ground darkness and that's what's going to encourage your cave gecko to come out and really enjoy its enclosure of course it'll only be happening when it's dark but at the very least, your gecko will feel safe enough to climb and really engage with its enclosure. The cool thing about Nymeria is that she is light enough in terms of her weight to climb on top of the exoterra fern and like it doesn't go anywhere. She just kind of walks across it and it just stays there because it's well made. You can structure the branches how you want them to be and she's light so she uses that for climbing as well. So I have two of those in her enclosure, a bunch of cork rounds and I also have the walls lined with cork tile and she also has her human hide. All the cork rounds are lined in a way that like, one, they elicit climbing, they kind of are stacked up throughout the enclosure, as you'll see later, and then two, they also are places where she can go in and hide. I regularly see her in different cork rounds, making sure that I can't get to her. <laughs> We're getting to the very end of this care video, and so the last couple of things I want to talk about are handling, co-having, and vet. So when it comes to handling, they are a very jumpy species. They can be more tamed, but they're never going to be like a leopard gecko, for example, that really seek out handling. I mean, some leopard geckos don't, don't get me wrong, but some do. Um, Nymeria in particular is a very shy cave gecko and I've read that cave geckos in general are very shy. They can be very light sensitive and they're going to want to have handling at a minimum. And while you may get yours to tolerate handling, it'll never be a an enjoyment of handling. So handle them at a minimum or um, handle them like sitting down in case they were to jump off your hand. Handle them lightly so that you aren't scaring them. They are a species that can drop their tail, so that's always something to keep in mind as well. If they drop it, it'll grow back, but it won't look exactly the same. And it's also a stressful incident for your gecko, so you obviously don't want that. A lot of handling of Nymeria I do 
is with her inside of a cork round or standing on a cork round so that she doesn't feel like I'm squeezing her or that she has to be in my hand. And a lot of it is inside of her enclosure so that she feels safe because it's nice and dark in there. But the thing is, she's never like bitten me or done anything crazy when I've been handling her. She has jumped off my hand and tried to run away, don't get me wrong. But she's never tried to bite me or like lash out at me. So it's not something you have to be really afraid of. It just takes some time and some patience. Now when it comes to cohabbing, some people do and I recommend that you don't. I think that when it comes to lizards, especially nocturnal ones, it's very easy to know who's pooping and who's eating if you only have one in the enclosure. But if you have more than one, it's gonna be hard if you have more than one, it's going to be difficult to determine who has been eating what and who has been pooping. Or if like one of the poops looks really weird, you don't know which gecko did it. So I always recommend housing them alone. Trust me, they are not going to be lonely if they are kept alone. They do not seek out the comfort of others of the same species. So please don't do it. Last but not least, I want to make sure that if you are getting a cave gecko that you have a vet who is an exotic vet who sees exotic species such as the Chinese cave gecko. If you get a gecko, make sure that you have a vet on hand in case anything were to go wrong. It is always a good idea to have a vet backup, even if you never have to use them. It is always a good idea to have one and know that you can have that resource if you need it. We're going to head on over to the enclosure tour so you can get a good look of how I keep Nymeria and get a look of what Nymeria looks like. So here is her enclosure. As you can see, it's very hard to see into it because it's dark and that's the whole purpose. You can actually see her tail right there. I'm gonna turn on the flash just for a second so you guys can see what the back of it looks like, but I'm gonna turn it back off for her comfort. Okay, flash is on, so you can see there's the cork along all three walls, and you can see some of the uh, cork rounds that I mentioned. You can still see her little butt. I should also tell you that that's where her heater is, but we'll get there in a minute. And so here's some of her ferns, her exoterra things back there, her driftwood is here. I'll break this down in a minute um, to show you guys more, but I want to turn the flash off first to make her more comfortable. Okay, flash is off. So we'll start with taking this out. And the reason I'm doing this is also because I have to clean out her humid hide where her poo-poos are. So I figure I might as well do that and film at the same time. So as you can see, these are nice and round for her to get in and hide. Here's her empty food bowl. Oh, there's one dubia left in there. So we'll fill that back up. And we'll take this off next. Move this out of the way. She's not gonna like this. Oh, poor baby girl. Here, we'll move this one. And you guys can see her little body hiding underneath that. I know, sweet girl, I'm sorry. I'm tearing your house apart. I just wanna make sure that I get to your uh, exoterra without knocking everything over. I'll leave that there so she can stay hiding um, for her own comfort. As you can see, the temperature in the enclosure is about the same as my room temperature. My room temperature right now is 69, yeah. So that's why she has that heater. Look at her little tiny butt, oh my goodness. Okay, let me go clean out her humid hide and then we're gonna come back, put everything back together and spray down the enclosure. So as you can see, she has scooted back further. She is not happy. Actually, let's see if we can get a closer look at her since I did say I would try to do that for the video. Sorry, girl, I know. Look, she's climbing, actually. All right, and here she is. See, she didn't even fight me or anything when it comes to being picked up. Why is it not focusing of her? On her, of course. Why won't you come through for me, phone? There we go. So this is Nymeria, my cave gecko. <laughs> She's so beautiful. Hi, sweet girl, I know. She didn't even fight me at all. She just really likes to run away. Oh, there she goes. So I'm gonna put her house back together so that she can go back to hiding. But yeah, this is the enclosure. It's a really good size for her. As you can see, she's already scaling that wall. This height is so important. Oh, and if you're worried about her being able to like potentially squeeze behind there, it's um, Velcroed with like adhesive against the back so it doesn't move. Um, and she really can't get behind there because she's not big enough. Again, sorry it's so dark, but I don't want to put the flash on her. Like, I'm just not gonna do that to her. So I'm gonna put her house back together and then I'll show you guys what it looks like all sprayed down and whatnot. And I figured I would show you guys we're up right there. That's about as hot as it gets. Oh, so this is what it looks like all wet down. 
all that's left to do is put her food bowl back in there with some little dubias, and then that's it. She's around here somewhere back there. Actually, there's her tail right there. All right, that's all from Nymeria. So say good night. <laughs> well, for her, it's good morning, technically, because she is awake at night. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you are interested in learning more about the Chinese cave gecko species itself, I will have a second video, which I will include up here, but it might be on this side. I'm not sure. And I'll also include it in the links below and at the end of this video. So you can find it in any of those places. It'll be about their lifespan. It'll be about where they come from in the world, all that good stuff. If you liked this video, leave a like down below, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be alerted when I post other care videos like the next one I should be posting should be in about a month my goal is to post one every single month until I no longer have any species to post care videos about leave a comment down below tell me if you think I got something wrong if you think I got something right if you love cave geckos like I do let me know if it's been helpful let me know anything down there and also please check the links for all the social media you could ever need including Instagram and Twitter and Facebook the most active place I am in terms of social media is Instagram so if you you really want to chat with me or see my photos of my animals or see stories I use the Instagram storage it's kind of like a snapchat but anyways I use Instagram a lot so that's the place you're gonna to want to go if you want to see more from me than just YouTube I also have a patreon so if you are interested in supporting me over there I appreciate it in advance it is in the links below I also have merch in the links below I also have an email you can contact me at in the links below anything that you might ever need is down there so check it out with all that said that's all for this one thank you so much for your time and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! As a special little treat for those of you that have stayed until the end, here is Nymeria, the day of the fall photo shoot. Enjoy!